Hey guys, welcome once again. This is Robin Hood, Michael Storm, and uh, I gotta tell you, this has been a day like you just wouldn't believe. <laughs> I have tried this video once in the live room, and everything that could possibly go wrong went bad. And this is now my second time, okay? Uh, I, I'm sorry, third, third time. I, I shut down that room because everything in the world went wrong, and I, I tried to do this again, and I just blew up the video again. So here we are a couple of hours now past where I should be and still have not completed. Hooray! That's such fun. All right, today we want to talk about moving averages for the third time. This is great joy for me. And uh, what to put on your charts and how to read them. All right, so we got the 20-period SMA. 40 period SMA, a 100 SMA, and a 200 SMA. Now this should be on every chart that you've got, except for the one minute. You do not need it. Okay, The only charts you need this on are the 5 and the 15 and the, the 60 and the 240 and just keep on going. But on the, on the daily you want to put the banker's SMA, which is a 55 period moving averages. Okay. Now we use all of these moving averages, and basically, um, if we are below the MAs, the currency is considered bearish, and if we're above, then it's considered bullish. Now, these are the four key time frames right here, five through four hour. These are the very best ones, and there's a lot of clarity with this in view. Now, the 20 and the 40 SMA are often going to form a nice up or a downtrend, and the moving averages will act as a river of resistance or a river of support. Here you can see on the Swiss franc that when we finally got above the 200, okay, things became mildly bullish, but it really took prices to snap higher uh, to, to get the moving averages to start their separation. When prices go higher, you'll see that they often will drift sideways through time and ride the 20 period before getting a breakout. This type of an area is a place to sell, to get out of your trade if you were long, and then you simply wait until you come back into the 20 or the 40 in order to buy. All right, you can also see the support. This used to be resistance right here, and uh, here it became very supportive. So candles are also a very good part of it. Uh, this is where you want to get out. Of course, big pops usually remember that they happen uh, in three drives. Very often we see three, one, two, three levels of pop, then it's safe to get out. Then when you pull back into the 20 period, you want to get long again. All right, so here you can see the prices are basically just riding it, and sometimes they'll threaten it a little bit. Uh, and here comes the crossover, and then you know probably moving back down at that point. So if we look at the 15-minute chart, we have a little bit more clarity. We always want to use our 5 and 15 and 60 together in conjunction so we can see them all at the same time if we can. Here we see the starting to cross bit. And here you see that we got above the 200 MA. And we went into a little bit of a flag. Now they're starting to separate. Here's your big pop. And you have a very nice pullback that you want to buy. Okay. This is where you get out. Places where it falls back down again is where you want to purchase again. Here's another place to purchase. Here's a warning shot across the bow. It's already breaking. And this could give us our, our potential market maker M-shaped pattern. Uh, we would want to see the one, two, three pattern, and then a break of the number two point that gives us the M shape. And then we'd like to see a break of the uh, 40 period, and a nice sharp down move towards the 200 MA. So now we're on the pound Swiss franc and a four hour chart. Here you can see that we, we had a beautiful trend. Beautiful, beautiful, right? It's riding the, the 20 period, riding it, riding it, and then you have a big break. It broke the 20, it broke the 40. Things eventually crossed over. This is a sustainable, I'm sorry, this is a sustainable uptrend but after too many levels of push I think here we're about six of them you can see that euphoria will eventually give way you break the 20 period you have a good chance of breaking the 40 and if it goes too low well that sets off the crossover again and retests will often happen in that crossover 
and this river can act as resistance on the way down. Okay, so we're going down, and we come back up to the river, it's resistive, and now that you've crashed through the 200, um, it's very much resistance, okay? And, and it probably will sink a lot lower towards the fib level, maybe down in here, uh, before you can ever get a push that goes back through the 200 again. All right, so once a trend is underway, it's very hard to stop it. The trends that have power will be seen on every time frame. It's basically just something of momentum that we want to always take the pullbacks um, on at the river. After about two days down or up, though, two days up or two days down, it's good to look for a correction first on an hourly chart, a very hard pullback to shake out the weak hands before a continuation in the newly established trend direction. Think about a daily buy, big green bar, that has a pullback on the hourly to retest that buy on the next day. And then the second day, it becomes an even bigger, greener bar, rocking higher, possibly coming up to a fib level or an area that used to be support that got broken. Okay, and if, and if the support got broken, we know that that now tends to act as resistance. So if you have two days up, you know, 100 pips, 200 pips, whatever it may be, very often you'll stall and you need a dramatic hourly downdraft to shake out the weak hands before ever making your AB equals CD type of a move. You know, day three might be a pause, day four might be a pause. And then, you know, on day five and six and seven, boom, 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 up you go. <laughs> I mean, that, that happens a lot. And you have to think about how it's formed in conjunction on all the different time frames. Now, here's the pound Swissy on a five minute chart. And you can see we're in a downtrend on this chart. And it doesn't always work, you know, to perfection. Sometimes you can pierce the river. Sometimes you pull right into it. Uh, sometimes you can go a little bit higher. Okay, it's it's not perfect. It's not flawless. It can be that way on a lot of charts, and it, it's very preferable when it is. But you know, I don't want you to think that it's foolproof and it always works. There's a good ten percent of the time that. You know, you'll see weird things like this right here. Okay, and here we look at it, uh, pound Swiss franc on a 15-minute chart. Here you see the power of the 200 MA to hold a move. The crossover happened, uh, I think, right about there. And then the separation starts to form. Okay, and the pullback to the river is something that you want to short. You get a lower low, then you want to see a pullback to the river for shorting. Lower low, pull back to the river to short it, have some patience and wait for it to crack. Here comes your lower low, right? You want to bail out in the lows. You want to wait till the river gets bumped up into and there's some kind of a sell bar on a 5 or a 15 minute chart before you go short again. So if something gets too far away from the river, it's not a trade, it's just a chance to get out. It's a chance to get out of your trade that you're already in. Okay, here we see on the pound Swiss franc hourly chart multiple examples. Uh, this is at least five excellent examples of something being too far away from the river. And remember, the moving averages are like the parents, and they call out to the candlesticks, which are like the children, and they say, Hey, you're too far away from me. Come on back. Come back to me. Let me see you for a while. And, and the children are always testing the parents. They're always trying to get away, you know, and see how far. They, they want to test their limits. Children want to test their limits. How far can I go And uh, before my parents call me back home? Um, so if, you're, if, if, if any of you are parents, you probably know what I'm talking about right there. Um, you know, I had kids, and when they were younger, they would test me quite often. So uh, here you got a nice drop. Um, you want to go long in, a, in something like this and look to get out when you get back to the river. Here, I mean, just check that out. About seven or eight bars down, right? You got some hourly pins being thrown. There's like a hammer and another pin. So you have dual bottoming tails. That's a great long with a stop just underneath the, um, the, the two hourly bottoming tails. You'd want to stop like maybe five or ten pips away from that, right? And you wait until it comes back up towards the river. Bail out. I mean, you could even take half your trade off here. 
set a break-even stop loss plus a couple of pips for your trouble and wait and if you see something like that wow you, you just made double the money on your on your second trade as you did on the first so you would you would get out okay this is too far away you can see hourly buy pushing it back up right too far away over here way too far away now I made this chart last night and actually we are right back up again right back uh, that's exactly how it worked so we're looking for stuff to get far away so we can buy and wait for the market to come back with a little bit of sanity and then we get out let's talk about MA crossovers and the 200 MA's power sometimes prices will reverse and go above or below the moving averages and slide through time and this can form an MA crossover. This can often be a warning shot across the bow of a coming trend change. Now the 200 MA we know is the grandfather of all the moving averages and often reactions can be seen at this level. The higher the time frame the more likely of a reaction. Often the 200 MA can contain and reverse a move. Here we have a picture of the Euro Canada on the four hour chart. Here you see your crossover. Prices got very expensive there, but when they came down to the 20 period and the 100 MA and resistance that, well, it used to be resistance, but because it popped, it became supportive on the way back down. So here's your pullback and your hold, right? And it, and it helps these MAs get separated wide like railroad tracks. Every time you pull back in, it's still holding. You can see it's still holding many times, still contained. And, and this is giving us multiple levels of rise for a coming euphoric drop through the 20 and through the 40. And this was a major threat. To pull all the way back down to the 100 was a very real uh, and very credible threat okay so here you can see that we got back up again uh, into these MAs and then came down this would be a very scary time to trade nobody wants to trade around a 200 MA that's chopping up and down up and down <laughs> through that that's that's too frightening okay the reason this is so frightening is because you're, you're kind of going below the 200 MA so many times that you're thinking a big drop could happen uh, or well, I mean, it, it just, it's unknown. It's chopping all around. Uh, anyway, it, it did uh, end up going higher, pull back again. This became supportive. Okay, and then um, we can see, you know, that, that we popped. And every pullback to the 200 MA has got the power to hold the move from this point forward. There's a continuation of power. Here we have a very frightening downtrend, and it's very, very fast. It's a fast move. Those moves are usually short-lived because it's not a sustainable trend. A sustainable trend, we want to be a 30 to 60 degree, I'm sorry, a 30 to 45 degree angle. 60 or 90 is way too far, it's too fast, and has a lot of power to come to a very abrupt end and reverse. Here again, you see the crossover. You see the move up higher, above the 200, Above the 100 together they're acting as support on that wick when they get married they can often act very powerfully uh, together so everywhere here you see where I put a 1 and a 2 and a 3 uh, these are levels of, of drive off of this level you have one level of drive and, a, and your first pullback second level of drive second pullback third level of drive and you have your third pullback now over here, you can see that we broke. There was a, a very bearish four-hour bar, and it pierced into the 20 period very um, greatly. So this becomes like a warning shot across the bow. Prices peaked again, and then you have a four-hour sell. So if a break happens like that with force, then you're definitely thinking um, you know, the next location to stall would be the 40 period. But if it breaks that 40 period, then you're looking at a move that can come a lot lower. Now, the actual charts, um, I don't have them up right now, but uh, this did actually occur. Okay, I, I wrote these last night on a Sunday night, and today is now a Monday night. 
But that break did occur. We didn't actually sink quite that far, but, you know, we came about halfway, all, almost three quarters, almost three quarters of the way down. Uh, so, you know, this is a good indication of lower prices. All right, and now we want to talk about the banker's moving average called the 55 DMA. Um, one more that you should add is that, and we only add this to the daily because the bank traders use this, and so we want to use that as well. Here on the euro, you can see that you have a 200 and a 55 DMA together. They're, they're basically married at, at the same price. So because of that price being the same, we would not want to short something like that unless you can crack it with hard force and drop like many, many pips, maybe 50 or 100. Then you get a pull back up to kiss this area again. That would be a signal to short if you you did that. First you want to fall, then you want to hook back in, then you could sell up here. All right, but we don't sell just because it's touching. Now, looking at the Euro New Zealand, you can see that the 55 period DMA held a move. This is the banker's DMA. It was attacked a couple of times and it gave way a little bit. You know, there, there was a little bit of give there, about 50 pips or so, a couple of times that it, it did move out but still contains the move. And here we want to take a look at uh, how the moving averages form pictorial trends. The trends can be seen when prices obey the moving averages and when that moving averages form a 33 to a 45 uh, degree slope. Not sure why I put 33 in there. I must have been thinking about the Illuminati <laughs> or the 32nd degree Masons. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I put 33 in. That's a little kooky. It, sh it should be 30 to 45 degrees slope. Uh, usually it's a good trend and it can go on for quite some time. Any slope that is very steep, as I said before, above 60 or 90 is not a sustainable trend. It's more indicative of a short squeeze that leads to euphoria or a long squeeze that will lead to capitulation. The following chart of Pound Canada is going to show an extreme drop that is not done in a sustainable trend formation. This is called capitulation, and it's about to come to an abrupt end very soon. Before we look at this, though, just look over here and see the crossover. See the sustainable trend down, but it got near the 200 MA, a very good warning sign to get out. Here was a crossover, and here was a sustainable trend, giving multiple levels of rise, okay? Here's your second push, which became very euphoric. You broke the 20, break the 40, and fall. But look, it's way too sharp, and it's way too fast. And it also, it came near some previous uh, support as well. So snapbacks have to happen. But this move right here gave the moving average crossover. And the rest of this move has helped get these to be separated wide very, very wide, like uh, railroad tracks now. And you broke the 200 MA, and it went too far, too fast, and it's about to reverse. And you would not want to short something like that. If you look here, this is Pound Canada on a 60, and if you look here, it's Pound Canada on a 4-hour. What's waiting for it? Well, we've got a 200 MA directly behind it. So any sharp move down into this 200 MA would probably be a buy. It would be supportive and prices should rise. Now I'd like to talk about the guppy indicator. This is a whole different set of moving averages, and I do want you guys to put this on some chart somewhere. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you've got to find a place to put it because this is a great indicator, and we definitely want to have this up on some of our charts. Now, here's the settings. It is not simple. It is exponential. The first list right here are the fast ones, 3, 5, 8, 10, 12, and 15. I color code them blue. The next set is the slow settings, and I color code them red. You can pause the video if you want to write these down, 30, 40, 45, 50, and 60. All of this right here should be on a chart somewhere. You want to put it on a 1-hour to a 4-hour chart. And of course I put a, a 200 MA on the charts, obviously for some kind of clarity. I need that. Now, this was developed by Daryl Guppy, who was a famous Australian trader. He used this very successfully to trade a hedge fund for way over 10 years 
made a ton of money, made a great name for himself. So we want to use these indicators. I've been looking at them for four years, four long years. So let's take a look at some examples of this set of moving averages. Uh, please notice in all the pictures that follow, first you're going to get a trend in place, and then often there's going to be a pullback to test the investor trend. Once a crossover happens, there can be hooks in one more time, but the follow-through makes the mouth of the alligator open up, and then it is really game on from that point forward, and it can often last for many, many days. So you're going to like these examples, I hope. A lot of them are pretty good. Here we can see the pound Canada on a 240-minute chart. It's a four-hour chart. You see now that you slammed lower, breaking the investor trend, and we came up and kissed it one more time to test it. And the mouth of the alligator is open very, very wide here, okay? It can last for days, and it did. It lasted for a week. Over here, you can see that we tested that in investor trend multiple days, multiple times. Prices came up and hit it, pulled back went higher, pulled back higher, big sharp pullbacks. Notice that the blue started to grow very fast, very firmly. And once you, once you cross these reds here, there's the crossover right here. This is the mouth of the alligator opening up right in here. Okay. The new investor trend prevails. You can see that it gets tested often. This happens all the time. And you have a continuation move. Here it was a very hard fight, very big, very nasty fight, and it tried very hard, but uh, not to be broken. There's your third push. Now, after that, we got a monster break that, that rammed through that investor trend, and what is most likely to occur is you're going to hit the 240-minute chart and get a bounce. But by then, the reds are going to be over here, and the blues are going to be much faster, and you will probably come up and kiss this area, kissing the investor trend. It's a new one, a new investor trend, and breaking it down again. All right, so it really, really looks like a short, but after a very large pop. Um, if we look at our odd New Zealand, now this is the trade that we are currently on, and we've been long this for days. And you can see it's in a downtrend. It's an incredible downed investor trend. And it looks like it's coming to an end because you see that we're popping back up into the reds and testing them very firmly. Here I, I got the chart not scrunched up so much, but spread out a little bit more. And you can see the blues are starting to cross. Okay, So uh, this may fight another day or two, and, and you can see the pullback into the blue. But once we cross through this red, it's game on. I mean, the mouth of the alligator will open, and we, we can have a move that will last for multiple days, maybe even a week or two. It's very hard to tell exactly how far uh, this thing is going to go, but it could be a long-term trade for us. Right? Now, over here, we've got pound odd. And if you remember, uh, well, we'll talk about this in a minute, but let's just first look here. Here's the crossover. Here's the retest. Here's the mouth of the alligator opening wide. Here's your trend test multiple times. Okay, multiple times it came down, tested the investor trend, even here. All right. Now, this break, you see right where I put the double exclamation points? Um, this was a false break, and it trapped a lot of people, including me. <laughs> okay. You may remember I shorted pound odd. I called it short because of this. It was really good. But it doesn't always work. You can see that the power of the 200 MA, it held the move. We came up and nailed it, and then Robin Hood is shorting it, and shorting it, and shorting it again. And I'm out here, and I'm shorting it again, and I'm out there, and I'm shorting it again, and I'm out here. And I had to short this thing so many times to try and work my way out of the trade. But look, remaining small, and calm is what gets me out. But if I had like 20 standard lots on, I would have been freaking out. You see? Because it went right back up into the trend again. And, and, and uh, 
it's very scary and some, it, it's not perfect sometimes things can throw you off a little bit but right now it's looking pretty good okay and if you remember i i have not really talked about um pound new zealand i, I mean you've not heard me mention this thing um this is no fun to trade. I stayed out of this for many, many days. You didn't hear me calling it long. Okay, and here's exactly why. Uh, if you just pause the video and look at these arrows, both to the upside and to the downside, you can see this was not a fun trade. It just chopped up and down through the investor trend like crazy. Here's a perfect example of how it doesn't always work. All right, this was not a clear or beautiful indication to do anything. Okay, nothing at all. Um, not long, not short. <laughs> I, I didn't touch it. I didn't want to. U.S. Japan. Now, this entire time here for weeks, especially on Twitter and right, right when our trade room uh, opened up, I was nothing but a bull for, for a long time. I mean, like a month I was a bull. Here, we see we got the, the crossover and we got the mouth of the alligator to open up. But you never heard me being a bull up here in these highs. I really didn't say anything much other than get out. <laughs> I was basically saying, if you're still long on U.S. Japan, you might want to get out. Because I knew there would be a pullback into the trend. I knew something would come. And uh, I became a bull again down here in the lows. I got out. I'm a bull over. Well, I'm a bull here. I'm a bull here. I know that I got out. I'm a bull there. I know I got out some here. Um bull back in here. I'm gone. I'm completely empty. Now I'm long again. I'm long and I'm waiting for this thing to open. But you know what? Today, I mean, it dipped into like the 101.50s or 101.60s and I'm still long and I'm a little bit of a bag holder. I, I, I don't have the mouth open yet. Um, I'm waiting for it. So I'm just waiting for this to become the mouth of the alligator. The bull run should last for days or even weeks. All right. And, and we just need to be like hungry panthers waiting every day to pounce on something. But I don't have my prey currently in my sights well enough for me to pounce all over it. It's just not close enough to me for me to pounce. And I don't want to exert my energy when I don't see what I really want to see. But once I see it, and once you see it, then we will pounce. But until then, let us not. Okay? We'll just remain very small. All right, now, here is the Euro Japan on a four-hour chart. I've had to crunch my, uh, my charts up quite a bit here to make this um, visible. It's currently in a bit of a downtrend, and we're waiting for these 113s potentially to be you know, retested. And what I'm looking at is the mouth of the alligator. I don't, I don't have this back part here showing all the way, but I'm looking for this mouth of the alligator to open up for many reasons, both fundamentally, technically, there's a lot of reasons I'm looking at this. It's not just these charts only. There's other things that are prevailing. And I want to see this mouth of the alligator get opened up wide. I believe we can go all the way as high as 120. All right, maybe not, maybe only 118, but I can see the 118s right in here. And this should come, this should be retested. And if you are going to be like me and you watch these charts for four years like I have, you're going to get a sense for, for knowing what we're looking for, okay, and, and why. You'll, you'll get that sense. It might take you a couple of years to see it, but you'll, you'll see it. And uh, all I can say is just take a look at the U.S. Canada, all right? Look at U.S. CAD. Um, I mean, it went 2,000 pips and, and, and had an unbelievable move. We have seen moves like this before, and I am actually expecting a move like this in the Euro Japan now. Here's our Mexican peso trade and um, many times I've been short-minded uh, up here in these highs I've been very short-minded I have shorted it um, these are not buys when you're up in these highs like this this is just not a buy and when you're down in the low it is not a sell currently short right now I mean short like uh, five micros and got five more bullets I could even take the reason is is a multi day run I think of about seven maybe we're on day eight right now I'm I'm not Sure, we have a bear harmonic helping us. Uh, we have a U.S. dollar bull that looks like it's about to completely run out of steam. And we're waiting for this to cross down and come into the investor trend and test it firmly. Give a bounce off of it one more time. 
then make a brutal slice through the investor trend and fall approximately 6,700 pips. Okay, that's what we're looking for, and that's why I'm already on this. I think I can wait <laughs> for 6,700 pips. I think I can wait. All right. Now, we move along. Here, I just want you guys to see that I love the guppies, and I hope that you will love them too. I hope you can see why I love them. I look at them at least once a day, if not twice a day. I always start my day looking at them. At the end of the day in the evening, after dinner, I will also look at them. I just want to keep a constant refreshing picture in my mind of what the major investor trends are looking like. They don't always set up at the same time, but once you see one of them does set up and starts to look good, you want to get in it, and that's a time to be on it, and you want to make sure that you're not going to take the wrong side of that trade, okay? And you also want to make sure that any correlation trade that may be deeply affected by whatever you see, you're not going to be in that. You don't want to be on the wrong side of a correlation trade, okay? So one more time, here's what the settings look like. They are all exponential, 3, 5, 8, 10, 12, and 15 color code them, and then the 30 through the 60, color code them, and your 200, you should just always keep it black, okay? Here's a refresher. We always want to start monthly and go down. We want to work backwards from the monthly, just like these charts show. Ready? U.S. Canada. Here is our crossover. This is a monthly chart. Push number one pull back to the rising river. Push number two, uh-oh, we're above the 200 MA. Very bullish. Pull back towards the 20. Push number three, pause bar. Push number four, euphoria. We just hit four levels of drive. We hit the 786 fib. Bam, it got slammed. Okay, but we're still above the 200, so the monthly is bullish. We're attacking the 20 MA, potentially getting bearish if it breaks, and the next logical place would be the 200 and the 40 that are going to get married. Can you hear those wedding bells ringing? That 200 and that 40 are going to get married together at the same price. And if you break that 20, that's your next target right there. And that's pretty far. <laughs> I hate to tell you, that's far. Uh, that's about 121.30s, and you have to look where we're trading. It's pretty high pretty high. So let's take a look at the weekly. We're barely able to hold the 100 MA. It keeps coming down and nailing it, nailing it, nailing it again and again. We have a crossover, but we're still above everything. So this is neutral to mildly bearish, potentially mildly bearish is starting to form. Here's the daily. See it? We've got a channel. We're below the 200, so yeah, we are bearish, because we are below the 200, but we are in a rising channel. And if it breaks the 200 MA, everything's going to go to bullish, 100% shift. You break that 200 and you break that channel, you can easily go to 136, 138, and 140, and possibly even by year's end. Okay, we're only talking about three and a half months. Three and a half months, you could actually be all the way up to 140 if that breaks. But stochastics are peaked and crossing over, and it looks like we should drop back into the middle of our range. Just imagine one more line right here in the middle, and you would think that that's where we would be going. Maybe. Now, on the four-hour chart. We're above the 200, above the 100, we're above every single thing, so we are bullish. Four hours bullish, because it's above everything. But there are six levels of drive, and this one looks euphoric. And we had a warning shot down into the 20 period, so if it breaks, there will most likely be a two-day run to get towards the 100 period moving average. See? And on the hourly, you have a tired bull. There is a crossover right there. Right now it appears to be false, but it's just tired. And, and basically you just want to keep doing this, dropping on down, 
to the 15 and the five minute and you know whatever for, for all the rest of your trades. So it just keeps going. In essence, we wish to be trend followers, buying pullbacks or selling pullbacks at very appropriate times. But if the trend goes too far or too long, we wish to stop doing that because it gets more dangerous that we could become a latecomer to the party. And we do not wish to be bag holders. Once the party music stops and everybody's bailing out the doors as fast as possible, you do not want to be a bag holder. Now, the best thing I could probably show you on this would be a live chart of a bag holder. Uh, let me see if I can find it. That would be on the pound. And it would be, hmm, let's see here. I think we're probably going to be looking at the 15-minute chart. There we go. Alrighty, so here's our 15-minute chart of the pound. Now, this is fresh in our memory because it just happened. It just happened to us. Here is approximately... Oh, 10, 10 o'clock, whatever, 10, 10 o'clock to 12 noon, let's say, on Friday. All right, 10 o'clock to 12 noon on a Friday. Give me one second. I just want to make sure that uh, this is actually still working. Um, yep, it appears to be. I just didn't want to lose my video a second time, <laughs> or actually a third time. Now, Friday, we talked about how the market makers can, you know, love to set up traps, like end of week traps will happen. Somebody became a bag holder right here. They shorted late. See? Look what happened on Sunday night. You got above here, right? Sun Sunday night. Oof. Ouch. That hurts. There's your crossover. Pull back. Pull back. Higher. <laughs> See, everybody who shorted here became a bag holder. And they were getting crushed and hurt. And they're like, wait a minute, why did I do that Friday afternoon? Um, hold on, I gotta rethink my strategy. <laughs> Look what happened over here. Stopped some of them out. Look what happened over here. Definitely stopped some of them out. Okay, for sure it did. So when things get too long-winded, that's when we have to stop. Uh, and look to take, you know, the other side. Okay, so I hope this was a help. Guys, I'm really sorry. Like I said, today, really bad day um, for doing these videos. It was extremely complicated and difficult. I had multiple uh, technical difficulties. I'm going to try and process this thing right now, but this is my third attempt, and I am, I am exhausted. It's been hours and hours and hours doing this video over and over again. I may have left things off. I may have uh, left certain things out that I I didn't talk about properly. Um, so, if that's the case and you have any questions, as always, please hit me up on Skype about it and we can go over it there. Okay, everybody have a great day and uh, I'll see you on the next video.